Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Swipe Card. Swipe Card is brand new on Steam. It's also releasing on many other platforms simultaneously. Most notably, and you'll see why I say most notably once we actually start encountering some of the prompts in the game. Uh, it's also an iOS game. I'm not sure if it's coming out on other tablets. But I say that most notably part because uh, it, it, to some extent, almost feels like the Steam version of the game or the PC version of the game is an afterthought. A lot of the... Uh, indicated kind of controls seem to be indicative of it being like a primarily iOS focused release for example There's a point in the game where it's like to do a wheelie drag backwards slowly and I'm like well I, On my Xbox 360 controller I don't have like a drag button and it defaults to the 360 controller if it's plugged in It's weird, okay, and I've seen a lot of people in Steam reviews uh, complaining about that as well that basically you know keyboard and mouse controls are not very good it controls fine with the 360 controller once you sort of figure it out but anyway relatively minor complaints but um, they have impacted my enjoyment of swipe card so far which is a uh, racing slash puzzle game it's very similar to trials in some ways very similar to like Joe danger in some ways um, but I don't think I enjoy it nearly as much as as either of those two even though I wasn't necessarily a huge fan of Joe Danger 2 or uh, Trials Fusion although I like Trials Fusion more than Joe Danger 2 anyway we're gonna get started here and I'm gonna explain what's going on um, a lot of my complaints about the game boil down to interface stuff it definitely does feel like this is designed for like a touch uh, based interface and I find myself just kind of getting overwhelmed sometimes um, with trying to navigate like okay I think we want to click on that there we go we'll start very simply here and we'll go through some of the levels I don't think it's a game that's devoid of value of course um, but it is uh, a little interesting, let's put it that way. Uh, ignore the basics for now. I'll teach you the basics. So, the way that this game basically works is, you know the, the county fair sometimes they'll have like that, uh, that game, like the midway attraction where you have a bowling ball, and your job is to push the bowling ball across this track that has like hills and valleys and stuff in it, and you want to get it to like stop in a valley without going over and hitting a bell that means you lose, right? This swipe cart is kind of like that. Basically, you start out and you only have uh, full agency over your speed uh, over the uh, the kind of like first period of the run. Your goal is to complete the level, get as many gems as possible, and then stop inside of the designated stop area. So it's almost a little bit pilot wingsy uh, in that respect as well. So. Um, basically, before that checkered flag on the right side of the screen is the only time when I can actually control my acceleration. So I can accelerate super quickly, as you can see right now, which has worked out totally fine for me as long as I can stop within the designated area. Not sure if I'm going to beat my previous time, but that's okay. Where do I rank there? Uh, that was actually pretty solid. Um, there are some other moves that we will learn over the course of the game, and the levels will become much, much more difficult. It's not simply, um you know, the hold down acceleration as much as possible. You kind of have to anticipate the level knowing the track and, and what comes later on the track is actually extremely important. I almost got that last gem. I might- oh, I got pretty close. That's okay though. Um, yeah, and then they will include things like jumps and they'll include, um, you know, eventually we'll get the ability to use a boost. They'll include a wheelie, which is a, a real pain in the ass. I think it's supposed to be a pain in the ass, but it's still annoying. Um, and, you know, what, what's the goal here? Basically, there's two different medals you can earn on a track, or two different objectives on, on any given track. That was obviously a terrible run on my part there. Quick restart works totally fine, no loading times or anything like that. Um, there's two objectives on, on any given track. One of them is to get to the exit as fast as possible, and uh, depending on your time, you might earn a gold, silver, or bronze medal there. The other one is to get all of the gems that are on a level. There's a weird kind of currency system in the game. You can smelt gems into, into cash, but you can't smelt cash into gems. It's, it's unusual, and again, I almost wonder if that's a vestige of this maybe having some micro trans transactions on the 360 version of the game. If you want to know why I restarted that level, uh, my 360 controller accidentally hit the edge of my desk. So, we'll do this one again. What I will say about the game is that uh, these early levels kind of cool. The later ones do become pretty difficult. You know how, you know, if you're a, a veteran of the trial series, New levels don't really bother you that much, even levels that are, you know, medium or hard in difficulty, not quite extreme, those levels are still pains in the ass, but, um, uh, new levels don't really bother you that much, it's pretty easy to sight read them. It's much more important to actually know what levels look like in this game, because you can't really adjust your speed as things get started, you have much less, uh, that, that was a bad decision on my part, you have much less actual control over your, uh, minecart than you do in a game like, um, you know, Trials or, or Joe Danger, for example, because you can actually adjust your speed on the fly in those ones. You can, I'm doing so badly here and I apologize, you can adjust your speed on the fly in Swipe Card, but not until, we're gonna go a little bit more slowly here, 
Not until you actually uh, get a few levels in and unlock this uh, boost item. Which you will see uh, as, as time goes on here. So, it can be a little frustrating. There's a lot more trial and error almost. In, and, you know, games like Trials and Joe Danger already have a, a ton of trial and error. That's kind of like what they do. Um, but in particular, uh, this game has more trial and error. Because you got to go through the level or at least take this opportunity to look at the level um, before you actually uh, proceed. Before you have any chance for success, I should say. And sometimes ooh, we're gonna get we're gonna get a good time here, but I don't think we're necessarily gonna um, get very many gems. But we did rank up. Let's talk about ranking up and what that means. Um, I'm ranked in the top eight percent in the world. That scares the shit out of me because I've been doing a terrible job. So we're gonna exit here. I believe that's right bumper. Okay, that'll take us back here. Then we're gonna return to world select. Then we're gonna go back even further and we're gonna go to the garage. So you can upgrade uh, yourself, not upgrade necessarily, but you can change your you know cosmetic. Kind of stuff going on here. I have 9,000 gold. That's a decent amount of gold. Uh, again, I can't stress enough that, that there's just kind of a lot of stuff on screen now. It makes it difficult for me to kind of navigate here. I'm trying to buy some new stuff, basically. So, or, or even change wheels. How do we... No, nope, that's not the right button here. You would think that this would be easy. Maybe it'll just be easier if I switch to my mouse here. Okay, so we'll... There we go. See, there's... A lot of the complaints that I've seen about uh, the game and Steam reviews have been that the... Um, control system that is on screen, the prompts that are on screen, are oftentimes pretty iOS-y, and it makes way more sense to, you know, just have like a click or something like this in the PC version of the game. Oftentimes, I feel like those complaints are very minor, and uh, maybe a little bit, you know, pedantic as well. This is one of the few cases where I actually don't feel that way. For cosmetic stuff, it doesn't really matter, uh, but for actually, like, I, I should be able to buy something more here, but, um, uh, when you actually like play the game and it teaches you how to do a wheelie, that's where I got confused. Where it was like swipe backwards to do a wheelie, and then I'm like, well, do I use the keyboard, mouse, or the 360 controller that you defaulted me to to do that? I don't know. Um, there is a way to buy things. I have forgotten how to do that now. Maybe there's a if I just go backwards, there's maybe a store. Oh, shop. There we go. So disregard that. That's just me being an idiot. As far as I know, um, the items that you get or the items that you buy don't actually provide you with any benefit they're just cosmetic items so we can get you know expensive wheels there we go and we can get a pink mine cart and that's cool I mean it's nice to know that that kind of stuff exists uh, but at the same time where's my pink mine cart there it is at the same time you know it, I, I kind of don't need that if that makes sense I'm, I'm kind of okay just having my existing uh, vehicle unless there's actually gonna be some kind of like demonstrable difference between them but I guess it's cool that it exists. Let's return to HQ here. So we can do some more levels. Um, only we'll talk about the gem bank because I just don't understand it and maybe that's my fault. So yes, you can convert gem pieces into gems. Like so. Um, I don't know if... It, can I click and drag? Oh, here we go. Convert for 1,000. Sure, we'll turn a thousand gem or a hundred gem pieces into a gem. And then we can sell our gem for 2,000. This seems like a very weird kind of like... Um, microtransaction model that I kind of don't understand, but I guess this gives me way more money that I can eventually do for other stuff. I don't know if maybe in the uh, iOS version of the game there's actually things you can buy with gems. I did see that there was the option to restock your store for one gem. Um, I guess we would want to restock it to try to get like different rarer items in there, because I can see that there are some, you know, different items in here now. Um, like this new helmet, for example, which we can buy and I will equip. I still, like with the controller, I can barely figure out how to do this, but that time it actually worked out fine for me. Alright, let's do some more, um, I mean, I guess I should talk about the fact that there is a level editor in the game. I haven't checked it out for myself personally. That is cool, though, if it actually works properly. I have no reason to assume it doesn't, but I have no reason to assume that it does, either. Um, I don't know what level we were actually on. Why don't we start on, like, level 110 here? So, let me see. This, this might actually be the level that we were supposed to be on. Uh, graphically, I think the game looks fine. Uh, I know that there are... Some people out there who are going to say that it looks kind of cheap. I don't necessarily disagree. Oh, this is a little bit of a tricky level. I don't necessarily disagree, but I think it looks, you know, clean, colorful, etc., etc. I will say this pink minecart with the wood blocks in the middle kind of strikes me. Oh, I should not have done that. I should have gone down the other way. Uh, kind of strikes me as a little visually jarring. That being said, for the most part, I think the game looks totally okay. It reminds me of another game I'm trying to think of. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of DLC Quest. I would not be surprised if it turned out that this game was actually made in XNA. And that's not an insult. Lots of, you know, gorgeous looking games have been made in XNA. Chasm, for example, was made in XNA, or is being made in XNA. 
funny story behind that when I was talking to the developers of the game at PAX. I was like, yeah, you know, it's neat to see like a really novel looking indie game because so much stuff looks X and A these days and blah blah blah. Basically me trying to seem like a big shot like I actually know anything about game dev. And they're like, well, that's really funny because, you know, our game is made in X and A. So, oh, well, weird physics there. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, something being X and A is not necessarily an insult in and of itself. Um, but yeah, I, I think it looks fine. The music's alright, nothing to write home about necessarily. Um, we learn about boost pads now, basically these are just pads that make us go a little bit faster. And, you know, as much as I've complained about not having much agency over your minecart, uh, once you actually get past that, like, that post, that acceleration post, if you will, um, I kind of feel like the game cops out, because pretty soon it introduces us to, uh, the ability to boost in mid-air. And we can basically do that, it makes our, our minecart uh, heat up, and if it heats up too much, then it can break or, you know, not be responsive, and we won't have as much control over it. But I really thought when I first got started that this was gonna be like, you know, it was gonna have commitment to the vision, shall we say. It's gonna be a puzzle game, and, uh, you would have to determine exactly how much acceleration to apply, and when to apply the brakes, and when to lean, etc, etc, to actually get to the end of the level. Wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of it, but I thought it was kind of a cool idea. This is where they introduced wheelies. Please validate me by telling me what to do. Yeah, drag slowly to wheelie. So it turns out that on the 360 controller, drag slowly to wheelie actually means that you have to apply the brakes just a little bit and lean backwards, which actually makes perfect logical sense if the game hadn't said drag slowly to wheelie because this whole drag slowly to wheelie thing is very, very confusing. In any case, uh, that is the most meaningful remnant of this being like iOS focus that I think I've seen over the course of the, the game so far. And wheelies become more important as time goes on. This level took me about 20 minutes to beat in and of itself. I've got about 45 minutes in the game so far, so uh, I consider this level to be pretty difficult. But yeah, you know, as, as I was saying earlier, I thought it was going to have commitment to this vision of being like, you know, you have to play the track enough to figure out exactly how much acceleration, acceleration to apply. There's other games like that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of it right now, but there's that game, um where you like kick yourself or you get kicked right at the start of it and then you like try to land on these people and the people kick you. I, th I think I played one that was like a school boy and school girl type thing where like a boy tries to approach a girl and then he gets kicked and he's flying through the air. You probably played it on the internet if you know uh, what I'm talking about. If we're from the same era at least. I've wasted, wasted uh, many a weekend playing that game uh, at home in like ninth grade by myself in my underwear. But in any case, instead we get access later to these like boost uh, option, or this boost option, I should say, uh, which basically allows me to be like, oops, I made a mistake, let's fix it. And you can fix a lot of mistakes over one run, and I think it's also borderline impossible, actually, I'm gonna complete this level this time. That wheelie at the end is the hard part. But in truth, that's actually one of the more satisfying levels to actually finish as a result of that. Um, but yes, uh, these gates uh, appear as well. Oh, I went way too fast, that was very stupid of me. Uh, but yeah, the, the boosts make it a little bit too easy, I would say, which is unfortunate, in my opinion, because it, it would be at least, not necessarily my kind of game, but at least kind of a, a more interesting game. I'm freaking fourth in the world on that track, that's pretty amazing. Um, as is, it's not horrible. I, I think it has some problems that could, could be easily fixed, mostly related to the UI, which just feels a little bit uh, not well suited for, for, you know, like a monitor. Oh, I forgot that there was a wheelie section there. Not well suited for like a, a PC monitor type setup. Um, and also the game, uh, I can't horizontal boost here, that's gonna hurt. And I'm definitely not gonna be able to make it across that. Uh, and the game, it, you know, it is repetitive, it, it can be a little frustrating when you, you fail the same level multiple times. Uh, and really though, it's, it's the, um, the fact that it doesn't necessarily feel very well suited for the PC version of the game. Um, which is unfortunate. That being said, you know, in, in its, uh, defense... Oh, slow down, slow down, yeah, there we go. Uh, in its defense, it's quite cheap, it's only five bucks, and uh, additionally, it's it's at the very least a kind of game that I've never, I've never ever played before in my entire life. Let's put it that way. It's like Trials with a little bit of a unique twist on it. I don't necessarily mean that in the most positive way, but you get it. The other thing I wanted to talk about is that apparently, um, this is an interesting level by the way, but apparently this game, uh, it, it got through green light, which is not unexpected these days, but um, it, it enacted a policy where basically, if you voted the game up on green light, if the game actually made it through Steam, then all of their green light voters actually received uh, a code for the game. And I didn't even know that was something that that is actually allowed. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to think of is, is am I okay with that? And I'm not, I'm not, you know, firing shots at, at this developer, because, you know, if that policy exists right now, 
uh, by all means go nuts, right? Oh, we need to go down that thing right there. Um, but I, I kind of, I can't help but feeling a little bit weird about it. Because it kind of seems like you're basically saying, like, I mean, it's a bribe in some ways, isn't it? I don't know if it's necessary. oh, come on, there we go. I don't know if it's necessarily immoral or anything like that, and it's probably something that I shouldn't have even gotten into over the course of this video, because it detracts from the, you know, criticisms of the game itself. That being said, oh, well, I didn't lower that seesaw, so this is going to be impossible for me to beat now. Uh, that being said, it does leave a little bit of a weird taste in my mouth. I mean, if you promise people a free game, I, I think they're way more likely to support you than they are to maybe support another game that doesn't give you a free game, but maybe is also equally good, if that makes sense. I don't know, but I mean, people have done that, and, and good games have done that as well. There have been... Uh, or ve like very good games, I think, that have given um, free green light or free codes to green light supporters. I'm not totally sure. Don't quote me on that, actually, because I might just be talking out of my ass. But oh, come on, slow down. So that'll do well enough. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of an interesting thing to think about. You know, Steam has a myriad of, of issues that deserve to be talked about now. Early access things, uh, you know, having development canceled on them with, while they're in the early access program. Uh, the Myriad games releasing on Steam, uh, quality control, curation, stuff like that. This is just another thing to add to the pile, I would say. Truth be told, I think that's really all we need to talk about with respect to, um, with respect to Swipe Cart. It's mediocre, in my opinion. Not necessarily one of my favorite games of the year. Uh, but it has some merits. It's cheap. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's available on multiple platforms. And, um, I, you know... I can see some people maybe getting into it, maybe getting their money's worth, but uh, this definitely is not going to be a game that I, I see many people spending, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours with. The same way you can get, you know, really OCD and meticulous with stuff like Trials and Joe Danger, etc., etc. Uh, in any case, there will be a link to pick up Swipe Card on Steam if you're interested in picking it up. It's five bucks, as mentioned. Might be a little bit on sale for its opening week sale, but then um, if you like the video, click the like button. It helps out a great deal, and of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.